These are basic items you will need to finish your chainmail coif. What I don't go over in this video is how to coil your wire. It's easy. Put your rod inside of your drill, put your wire between your rod and your drill and tighten it, and then roll yourself a coil. Simple as that. Okay, so a coif starts with one single ring on the very top of the head. You want to start at the top because that way you can open and close as needed. So to start off, you start with one ring and then get six other open rings. What you're going to do with those six other rings is you're going to put them inside that one ring. Now, if anybody knows anything about crocheting or anything like that, it makes it really easy. Because this is like manly crocheting. It really is. If you understand how crocheting gets larger and smaller, it's basically the same principle. If we want to talk about the flow of chainmail, we'll get to that at the end of the video. But it's very important to how your coif turns out. Alright, so I've got my six pieces on the one. You want to fan it out to make sure you understand what you're going for here, okay? So we've got it fanned out. You can see the six around in a circle. Now what you want to do is you want to link them all together like that. So now you have the very top. Now if you look between the rings you just put in, those six original ones, you want to add another ring inside those six there. That'll create more space. That'll open it up wider. Alright, so here I have those rings added in. So as you can see it's getting bigger and we're keeping a cylindrical, or not a cylindrical, a circular pattern going. Um, even though we're going one ring at a time, uh, you will notice as you get further along that you will see that there are certain lining. There's a line to the flow of the chain mill and that's very important. All right. So at this stage, it's kind of hard to really see what you're doing, so let's put it on paper real quick. So there's our center ring. We add six more. Now with this drawing, it's not completely accurate of what I'm trying to say here, but it helps. So you got your center, your six, and then you put your ring, your connective ring on the ends, okay? Now this is just kind of exponential. It's not really exactly how I wanted it to come off, because you don't, you don't add rings to these, these outside rings. You actually add rings to the six you added. But for showing of the exponential growth that we're looking for in volume of ring, this is the easiest way I came up to show, okay? Okay, so we're just trying to expand the size of our ring cylinder, our ring circle. Here's another way to look at it. We start with our one ring. You have a line of chain mail, a line here, a line there. You always want to make sure you're adding in a new line. If you're adding in a new line of chain mail, you are making it wider. This is also another good way to make chain mail dice bags. Um, if you ever get into making arms or trusses, you want to make sure if at the knees you make it wider and then smaller right afterwards. And you have to know how to add rings and decrease the amount of rings in certain areas. All right, the second one I'm going to show you is kind of how to decrease rings. You take lines that exist, you add them together. Now, if we're not understanding exactly what I'm talking about, chainmail has a natural flow. If you are looking at a set of rings and they are all facing the same direction and it's in a row, then we've got something wrong. You have to be able to see a straight line. You have to be able to push them together and release. It looks more like sideways scale, if you think about it. So the picture on the right is closer to what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm a terrible artist, so I can't really tell you exactly. It, it, there's a line to it. And so within that line, you need to be able to add another line. That's what we're doing at the top. We're adding new lines to make it grow larger, okay?